Oh, welcome to this devilicious channel, Infinity Kingdom. Yo, what's up, guys? This is Devilicious here from server 121. Representing the MAH Alliance, massive fan of IK, and would love to connect with you on Discord and have a chat. Uh, talk about anything you want to talk about. Uh, hit me up, Devilicious, hashtag 0121. I'm also known as the Super Happy Aussie, always laughing and always finding turkeys. <laughs> Today, we're going to look at the Battle of the Whales on S121, Devilicious from the MAH Alliance, taking on the Godfather. Now, the Godfather is one of the coolest guys on the server. His uh, STP is sitting at around 319,000, so he's pretty strong, uh, running C50 T7. Uh, in terms of total troops. Now we're in the middle of essentially the KE leg of our King of the Hill. And the Godfather and I decided that we would have kind of like a friendly to and fro testing some of our marches. So he wanted to test his second march, which is Earth with Liz, against my main march, which is Earth with Liz. Uh, and, you know, switching in Zenobia to see whether Zenobia could actually. Uh, you know, add some value to his second march. Uh, now, I was lucky to walk away with a win uh, because I am T6, but my STP is stronger. It's 288 versus his 277. So, you know, we decided that that was a pretty good uh, balanced matchup or a relatively even matchup. So we decided to, to kind of have a little bit of a, a play around with it. Uh, now, as, as the night went on, we, we kept talking and, uh, you know, he, he said, well, you know, would you mind attacking my main? And I said, well, you know, let me have a look. And, uh, you know, I had a look, uh, his main is Wind, and it's a pretty strong Wind too. You know, Hannibal, Saladin, Baldwin, and Chin are all pretty much nearly at 25. I mean, the only only Immortal in that build is uh, Chin, that's at level 24. But it's a pretty good build. Uh, aside from the Dragon being a little bit weak in terms of level, that is a really, really strong march that he is running, especially at 319,000 STP. Uh, so I reached out to him and I said, well, you know, do you mind if I uh, test out taking on your wind march, this really strong wind march with T7 troops? Would you mind if I tested out my shadow? So I'm running shadow as a third march. Uh, I do like shadow. Uh, I'm kind of working on it at the moment and trying to understand, you know, how can I potentially utilize the shadow march in the best possible way? Uh, the good thing is a lot of my skills are already at level eight. So... That's given me the flexibility to be able to kind of switch around skills uh, across my first, second, and third march to kind of make any march, whether it be Wind, Shadow, or Earth, a little bit more competitive in terms of overall STP and power. So what you're seeing here is I'm going to try and uh, attack the Godfather's ultimate Wind march with a pretty standard Shadow configuration, which is where you're basically running Siegfried and Bjorn in your front row, and then you're running Elizabeth and Himiko in your back row. And a lot of players like to, to run Shadow in this way because you've got that mixture of uh, physical damage and then also magic damage uh, from Himiko and Liz in the back line. And then you've got you know, Bjorn, which is pretty tanky, and he's got that you know, kind of like uh, lifesteal uh, effect. And you've got Siegfried that does kind of this massive ultimate attack that does a huge amount of damage. Uh, so what I'm doing at the moment is just switching some of the skills around uh, on these four models to try and boost the STP a little bit and to get a little bit higher. Um, so Himiko, I typically try to you know, max out uh, as much of the magic damage as I possibly can. For uh, Siegfried and Bjorn, I uh, try to max out uh, some attack and also some defense, so play a little bit of a, a balanced uh, mix in terms of overall skills. Uh, and then for Liz, try to boost her uh, attack damage and attack speed if I can. Uh, that gives her a little bit more of a, an added value uh, in terms of the overall performance of Liz when taking on other marches. So uh, we're just going to quickly jump back in and, and do one more double check on this march. So we've got uh, Bjorn running Absorb. Okay, uh, We've also got uh, Berserk and Cleave on, on Bjorn at the moment. But we're going to make a small change because Bjorn... I believe, truly believe, after testing this a couple of times, that he runs uh, better when he's got some uh, defensive characteristics uh, applied. So we're going to put uh, a defensive skill set on Bjorn uh, to go along with uh, the other two kind of attack damage focus skills. Uh, we are going to make some changes in terms of uh, Liz's skills with uh, skills like Chaotic Blade to try and get that additional attack damage percentage happening. 
uh, and uh, you can see now that we've reached 272 STP. I think that's a pretty good uh, amount of STP, so we're going to give this a try, and I'm expecting a defeat, uh, which it was. So Godfather walked away with a pretty easy win, actually. Uh, I lost 4,000 troops, he lost 1,700, so uh, really didn't do much damage at all uh, in this situation. 272 versus 319,000. Uh, and you can see here when looking at the uh, easy battle details uh, that I barely did any damage to his uh, Hannibal. I barely did any damage to Saladin as well. Uh, looking at his Hannibal march, it is incredibly strong. He plays a good balance of attack damage and also defense as well, uh, allowing Hannibal to kind of really cause a lot of chaos and a lot of havoc. Now, I spoke to Godfather, I said, look, do you mind if I try something different with my Shadow March? So recently, I've been working out uh, a March build that utilizes Tamiris instead of Himiko. Uh, now, Tamiris is a relatively new immortal uh, for the Shadow uh, players that love the Shadow builds and the Shadow Marches. And uh, she's a little bit squishy, so if, if she gets targeted right at the beginning of the match, uh, it's pretty easy to see her kind of die off at the beginning of the match. So, uh, looking at a couple of other servers, I've seen running a couple of players running Tamiris with defensive skill sets. Uh, and I've been looking at a couple of the other details uh, from other servers around how do people utilize Tamiris in the best way possible. And I've seen a lot of gossip online about you know Tamiris being really, really good against uh, Hannibal or any kind of major like damage per second or DPS immortal. So what we're going to do is we're going to customize uh, Tamiris a little bit. I uh, strongly recommend putting Sacrifice on Tamiris because it'll increase the damage of two random allied units uh, and decrease her damage. Now this is a really good skill set to have on Tamiris because actually Tamiris' overall damage is not that high. Uh, so really kind of like having uh, that damage and then boosting her defense, uh, you know, putting assist and then also uh, looking at other defensive skills like Oakenguard and making sure that she's got some defensive skills uh, on her that will keep her kind of running in the battle a little bit longer because she's got this really cool ability which essentially charms the enemy immortal and uh, when, you, know, you want her to charm as many times as possible because it basically gives you the advantage of a 4v3 uh, matchup allowing two mortals to kind of take... Uh, advantage of a short period or short window of time uh, to put some pressure on and, and, and attack uh, the enemy immortals during the match. So I'm going to switch around some of the, the uh, build a little bit, uh, putting Berserk on Liz as well to increase her speed. And we're going to attack this 320,000 uh, STP March T7 uh, with the Shadow March. Still not full Shadow, right? Like in terms of the full build. Uh, still, a lot of these immortals are only 47, 46, 45, and Tamiris is 41. So it's it's uh, still a work in progress. Now, we did get a pretty large troop loss, 4,700. But what you can see here is we actually uh, resulted in 6,300 troop loss on uh, the Godfather side. Now, this is really impressive because this is a 270,000 STP march going up against a 320,000 STP march. Uh, and super happy with this build. Uh, now, I, I kind of sped through the build details because I'm kind of keeping it on the low at the moment because I'm about to go through Throne of Supreme and I want to keep this build as a little bit of a secret to take on some of the other strong players in Server 121. But if you're running Shadow or you want to know a little bit more about this build, you can reach out and have a chat to me. I'm, I'm more than happy to share some of the details and some of the key findings with you. Uh, but what I really, really love about uh, this particular build is that this build has the ability to take on much more powerful marches. Now, in terms of the uh, overall experience uh, of the Shadow March that I've been working on, I will say one thing in particular, and that is if you are going to run Shadow, I'd strongly recommend looking at investing in getting Tamiris because Tamiris really will give you that additional benefit of, you know, really kind of taking advantage of her uh, charmed experience. We're going to show you the replay of the match so that you can see what exactly happened uh, between this T6 march versus this T7 march. So you can see for yourself, you know, what, what's actually happening in the, the match. 
Now at the beginning of the match, uh, you can see that we're already pretty much at a, an even starting point, uh, but you can see that the wind march is doing uh, more damage to me than uh, the damage that I'm essentially causing the, the wind march, right? So 85% to 64% at one point in this beginning of the match uh, puts the shadow march on a little bit of a back foot uh, because this wind march is just doing so much damage. But what you can see here is, uh, luckily, Tamiris is still surviving. Uh, she hasn't been taken out yet, and she actually procced uh, five charms in the match. Now, Bjorn having that additional kind of resilience and good balance in terms of overall defensive skill set, and then also having the, the lifesteal effect as well, that kept him in the game a little bit longer, allowing Liz uh, to really kind of do damage uh, to... Uh, Hannibal right at the end and if this match had gone on for another 30 seconds I'm actually pretty confident that we co probably could have walked away with the win uh, with Liz actually defeating Hannibal uh, but because the time failed or it was a timeout uh, it still counts as an attack defeat. I hope you guys like this video. Um, reach out to us on uh, Discord for the MAH Alliance, or if, the, if you're looking for balance and harmony, you're looking to jump to a good server, Server 121, join us on Discord. Um, come and have a chat with us. I hope you like the video. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, and thank you so much for watching. I hope you connect with me on Discord, Devilicious hashtag 0121.